So I came across this video from Aki Dearest where she had ordered a boba or tapioca pizza out in Japan. I think it was from like Pizza Hut or Domino's or one of those places. And I figured, how do we get that here? And the only way to get that here is if we make it ourselves, but we have to do it with pineapple boba just to, just to tick everybody off. Thank you to ridge.com slash chef PK for sponsoring today's video. I can now hold 12 cards with cash without losing speed or strength. Made of premium titanium materials. What is this? Brick brother, you've returned. You think you can get rid of me? It is I, deal. I have come back stronger than ever. Take this. Pathetic, so easily, nunny. With a lifetime warranty and free worldwide shipping, I cannot be easily defeated, big brother. You cannot surpass me. I can't keep up, where is he? No! Use the links below at ridge.com slash chefpk for 10% off and free worldwide shipping. Now the first thing we're gonna do is make a brine for our pork. Start by using one liter worth of water, followed by 50 grams worth of kosher salt, 25 grams worth of sugar, and bring this over to the stove and just dissolve everything. We're also gonna need one whole white onion. Just go ahead and dice it up as a rough chop. And you're also gonna need four cloves worth of whole garlic and a small bunch of thyme. This is all going to make your brine. Now once your sugar and salt has dissolved, you do need to let this cool down before we do anything else to it. While it's cooling down, grab your pork. I'm using a couple of pork chops for this because I couldn't find tenderloin, but if you can find a tenderloin, and use that instead. Now take all of your mirepoix, add that to a vacuum sealed bag or a freezer bag if you have it, along with a couple of black peppercorns. Now take your pork and place it right on top of your mirepoix just so it's laying on there kind of nicely and it doesn't move around when you try to bag this thing. Now carefully start pouring in all of your brine. You want to make sure that your brine completely covers the pork and all of your mirepoix. Now take your vacuum sealer and set it to the wet setting and realize that that does not work at all and get liquid all over the place. Carefully transfer this into a different vac bag, this one that has has a neat little attachment that you can use on the side. Realize that this one, this one also doesn't work. I don't know what the hell the point of this is. After standing up the bag, I was able to remove some air from it, but we're just gonna go ahead and brine this for about three days. After brining for about three days, remove all the liquid and give it a small rinse and then reseal this bag. Yes, you can reseal these bags and it works out fairly well when there's not a bunch of liquid in it. Now we gotta put this in the hot bath with Rindo. We are cooking this at 155 degrees for about three and a half hours in our sous vide bath. Alternative you can roast this in the oven for about 45 minutes at 325 Fahrenheit. Rindo says she is ready to go. So turn off Rindo, and this is the only time you would ever turn off Rindo, and remove your pork from that hot water bath. Now let this cool down to room temperature and then throw it in the fridge with everything intact until we're ready to use it. Now we get to make our pizza dough. For this, you're gonna need 250 grams worth of all-purpose flour, just a heavy pinch of salt, followed by 135 grams worth of warm water. You don't want this too hot. Next, add in 10 grams worth of sugar, and then six grams worth of yeast. Throw your yeast in there and just give it a little bit of a whisk so that way it'll start to bloom properly. Let this rest for about five to 10 minutes. You don't really need to wait too long on this concoction. And once it is sat, go ahead and add it to your flour and start to kind of fork it together. Next, add in just a touch of olive oil. This is personal preference, but I go with about a tablespoon or about five grams worth. Continue to fork your dough just until it starts actually forming a dough into where you can't really fork it any longer, and that's when you're going to start mixing this by hand. Mix it in the bowl by hand just until it starts coming together, starts getting a little bit of a shine to it, and once you can handle your dough very easily, it's not super tacky, after about five to ten minutes, your dough is ready to go. Form this into a bowl and add this back into your bowl with just a little bit of oil so it doesn't stick too hard. We're going to go ahead and let this rest in the bowl until it's doubled in size, or about 45 minutes to an hour. After that 45 minutes to an hour, go ahead and give this a little bit of a punch down, throw your lid back onto this, and we're gonna place it back into the fridge until we're ready to roll it out. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, pineapple boba. For this, you're gonna need 120 grams worth of pineapple juice. Bring that over the stove and get it to where it starts to simmer and immediately turn it off. Add five grams of your tapioca starch to your pineapple juice and slowly start bringing this together over a very low heat. The tapioca starch will start to cook and incorporate with that pineapple juice and come up into this gummy sticky mess. This is when you're going to add an additional 175 grams worth of tapioca starch. Go ahead and keep mixing this together in your pot with that warm starting tapioca and you can see that it just 
it just doesn't come together. There was something going on with the pineapple juice with the tapioca flour that just wasn't working. Probably had something to do with the acidity in it, but I wanted to show this to you guys because uh, don't use pineapple juice to try to make pineapple boba. This is actually attempt number three. For this, again, we're gonna be using 120 grams worth of water. Add in about five to 10 grams worth of your tapioca starch. Bring this together over a very low heat until you get that gummy mixture. Then add in the rest of your tapioca starch with the heat off and start bringing this together with your spoon. Once it starts to come together into some kind of a mass, you're gonna be able to put this out onto your cutting board. You can see how it's starting to come together and to get it to that yellow color, I actually added a little bit of yellow food coloring. Now you can actually start kneading this on your cutting board. This already looks completely different than the one we just tried to make. As you're kneading this, that food coloring will start to incorporate itself into your dough, but if you want it to be a little bit more vibrant, feel free to add in as much food coloring as you want. Well, don't add in, don't add in too much. Don't add in too much. Continue to knead this for about 15 minutes or so until it is no longer super warm. It should start to look like banana a Laffy Taffy, which really makes me want some Laffy Taffy right now, but you should start to be able to roll this out into your nice little yellow snakes. Once you're able to roll this out into snakes, cut it up into workable pieces. I had to cut mine up into about four pieces before rolling these out into my snakes, and as you roll these out, use cornstarch to keep them from sticking. Now go ahead and start cutting up your boba into small, tiny, little boba balls of deliciousness. You're gonna do this for each and every single boba ball. Yes, it is tedious, but it is very much worth it. Keep cornstarch on all that to keep it from sticking. Now we're gonna be cooking this in pineapple juice instead. Once you add in your boba, watch it explode everywhere because that apparently is what's happening today. Now we're gonna be cooking the piece of boba in the pineapple juice for about 15 minutes. After it's simmered for about 15 minutes, throw a lid on it and let it hang out for another 15 minutes. Now we just wanna check to see if this actually worked and yes, the boba was beautifully cooked. Go ahead and try this, it is extremely hot, so just be careful. And yes, it tastes like pineapples. Now in a bigger pot, cook up the rest of your boba the same way, simmering them for 15 minutes in hot liquid, letting them rest for 15 minutes with the lid on, strain out all of that juice, and make sure you do rinse the extra starch off before putting in some of your liquid back onto the boba to let them soak in that beautiful pineapple juice. You only wanna put in enough juice just so that way none of them start to stick together and you're pretty much good, you have pineapple boba. Now we need to make the sauce. And for the sauce, it's actually pretty easy to make. Take a 28 ounce can of crushed tomato, add in about 10 to 15 fresh basil leaves right on top of that, throw in four peeled cloves of garlic and blend it until it's completely smooth. You can also do this in a regular stand-up blender instead of an immersion blender, but it's gonna work either way. Throw a lid on this and you're pretty much good to go with your pizza sauce. Now we do also have to get the pork ready. When I pulled the pork out, I did decide to rinse off some of the good good that was on there because I don't feel like it was actually good good. Cutting into the middle of this you can see how beautifully brine this was and the goal is to just slice this as thin as possible so you have these beautiful thin pieces of pork that taste absolutely phenomenal. I'm gonna be honest I made a grilled cheese the next day. It's finally time to put the pizza together. Grab your dough out of the fridge and start forming this into your actual pizza crust. I like to roll mine out to about a quarter of an inch worth of thickness for however much dough I'm using, which is probably to my detriment because this is a pretty big pizza. I also like to press the edges up just a little bit to start forming somewhat of a crust, but feel free to leave this part out. Go ahead and dock your entire crust with a fork just to prevent any air bubbles from happening and destroying your pizza. Hit this with a little bit of olive oil, grab your aqua brush and brush it so it's super even all the way throughout. Alternatively, you can use butter and start adding in your pizza sauce. This is totally up to you. I don't like a tremendous amount of pizza sauce on mine, but feel free to do you. Now for the mozzarella, I'm using local Tillamook Thick Cut Boy for this, and you're gonna need about eight ounces or about 220 grams worth of mozzarella. Now for the pork, I'm using that entire pork chop that we cooked. Only one of them, not two of them. You can do two of them. I mean, it's your pizza. But you just wanna make sure it's evenly distributed throughout that pizza. Now for the pineapple boba, this is the coup de gras for this pizza. Evenly distribute just a little bit of your pineapple boba all over the pizza. Get your paddle and make sure it's lightly floured. Regret every decision you had on not putting the pizza dough on the paddle earlier and try to get this thing on, realizing you made a mess. Slightly stretch out the dough and now it's a rustic crust. Place this onto a preheated pizza stone that has been in the oven for about 30 or 40 minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Season it with a little bit of black pepper and pop this in 
the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius for about 12 to 15 minutes. After those 12 or 15 minutes, let this rest on the stone for about 3 to 5 minutes, and then go ahead and start cutting your pizza. I like to cut mine into 8 slices, so I feel like I'm eating more pizza than I actually am. And there it is, our pineapple boba pizza from Japan. Why Japan? Why? There it is guys, our uh, pineapple and uh, Canadian bacon boba pizza? I don't know why. I mean, it looks really good. It looks really interesting, to say the least. Rachel, you don't want pizza? I mean, the crust is really good. The bacon is really nice. The boba adds a little sweetness, but it's not that like acidic pineapple sweetness to it. It's not bad. But it's not that great either. <laughs> this took me three days. I'm gonna eat it. Uh, six out of 10. We'll go. That's pretty high. Six out of 10. Cause I wouldn't throw it away. I never throw food away anyways, but it's, it's okay. I wouldn't order this from Domino's or Pizza Hut though. My name is Chef PK, get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food. I don't, this, just don't, don't play with this. Or try it, you, do, you know what you do, you. I'm out. Rachel, there's pizza for you. The rest is yours. Mm -hmm. I'm still gonna eat it all. <laughs>